I'm Dan. I'm Chaz. This is Wine of Serious Business, episode 160. And uh, we're here with a couple Pinos. Kind of a lazy night. We, uh, this is a late night. Late, late night Saturday. Night. And uh, Dan hit me up for, it was just like, you know, you want to you wanna film a show tonight? Eh, I got some time. Brought over a couple of these Ayers wines. And Ayers is a producer that we really enjoy. Um, at least I've enjoyed in the past. Didn't get a chance to try any of their 2009s. But their 2008s I was a real fan of. Um, by you. Yeah, and, I, and I've had a lot of respect for them because they're, they're one of those wines that I hear good things from a lot of people about and for really no good reason we just don't we don't get to drink that much like we, we don't we, you know we don't pick up we don't go to any parties where they, they happen to be open um, but every single bottle I've had from them has been you know delicious and interesting and uh, <coughs> crap uh, yeah <coughs> And every single bottle we've had from them has been delicious and interesting. And, you know, part of the show is like a chance for us to try out new things. And I saw these on the shelf, and I'm like, we got to try these wines. And and they've been so good that this is also something I like. I really want to kind of get the name out there because they do interesting stuff. Every every year their wines are compelling, right? Yeah, like, I mean, and uh, good price points. Absolutely. So Neither one of us have had either of these before tonight, so, so kind of a new first impressions on it. Both 2010s. Yeah, so the first wine is the 2010 Ayers. How do you pronounce that? Ayers, Ayers. Ayers, Ayers. Okay, uh, Ayers Perspective in a River Ridge Pinot Noir. 2010. 13.5 alcohol. Nice. Um, so it's a blend of Ayers Armstrong and, wow, I can't even pronounce that. That's a Sykonen? That's like a, fin a Finnish name or something, something like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, just a blend of probably, probably uh, so this is one of the more expensive ones that you produce. Yeah, and all River Ridge fruit. So, okay. so that that's that's interesting. Actually, if you watched our interview from the last last couple of weeks, Marcus talked about River Ridge a little bit there. So, man, powerful aroma is already coming out of the glass. Right, shaking it, right? Yeah. yeah. A lot of depth. Lar um, largely red fruited, you know, like very very yeah, that's delicious red fruit. Definitely a tart note, kind of like like gooseberries or cranberries, a little bit going on there. A little bit of forest floor too. And a little bit of that like earthy, um, or the, the funky notes that you get out of Oregon wine that tells you this is Oregon, yeah. right? A little bit of that like barnyardy sort of earthy funk, which is delicious. I really like that with Pinos. Mm, it smells wonderful. In impressive mouthfeel already, right out of the way. Like the, the, the structure is nicely integrated, it settles really cleanly on the palate. Mm. The fruits have a good good sense of purity to them. And just overall deliciousness, like there's not a single harsh thing in this wine. Yeah. The acidity and the and the tannin are I wouldn't say below the fruit, but just right on that like the lower edge of balance. And the fruit here is just delicious and easy. This is a very easy to drink wine already. Yep. Raspberries and strawberries. You know, all over the place, right? Like there's a good, good feel of the fruit, good flavors, but they never get too strong. They never, you know, really get out of balance with the structure. Uh, yeah, the fruit seems to fade off a little bit at the end. And I'm getting a little more tannic character, like way out on the finish. Right. Um, but that's, you know, that's well after you've had a chance to experience everything that's going on. The, the, the wine for me, overall, like the the. Initial experience is, is very, very delicious red fruit. And I agree with the tartness, sort of like the, the tartness going into the finish, but it's like reminding me of sort of fresh cranberry or, or, or grapefruit. That um, makes sense. Yeah. And, and only I think, uh, I think, I think it's got enough integration between those two flavors as it extends into the finish that it's, it's still very delicious, like at least on the palate. But the earthy stuff that was coming through on the nose a little bit, not so much coming through on the palate, like this is mm -hmm. largely just fruit. With a really nice structure, it's obviously built very well, but not a lot going on besides that. Strawberry flavors are just fantastic as I keep sipping this. I'm really, really enjoying the fruit. Kind of hard to put the glass down, even right. Yeah, like it's this wonderful. Is, this is really easy drinking stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, 2010, I guess, has has been a more approachable vintage in a lot of ways. Um, but you know, it's great to see something integrated this well right out of the gate like that. Um, We'll give it 90 points, just barely for me. Um, but uh, but it, it's yeah, like I yeah. said, it's it's a little, there's a little bit of roughness on the finish for me. It, it clearly doesn't bother you. 
quite as much, uh, but just the, the fruits, I'll even go there, like the fruit is actually like exciting on the palate. Yeah. Every time I have like a good sip, I'm like, yeah, that's delicious. So. And I agree, but so I was going to go like 90, 90 plus almost sure. on this. Um, if there was a bit more complexity, if there was a bit more going on in the palate, like the nose suggests a lot more than the palate actually gives, but there's delicious flavors here. And, I, and structurally for me, I prefer where the acidity levels in the tannin are here. It's it's a really fun one. Yeah, I can yeah. see it benefiting from a little age, but I, totally. I also, you know, if you've got a bottle and are inclined to crack it, I don't see any reason to wait either. It's, it's, it's rocking right now. Like it's, it's got really good acidity and tannin, but the intensity is just above it, and I think, I think as that ages, Maybe those flavors darken a little bit. I think this would be a really cool wine. Yeah. yeah. Really solid stuff. This is the uh, 2010 uh, Lewis Rogers Lane, also Ribbon Ridge. Say anything about this on the back? We should read this before we yeah, get into the show. Read we, we never do. Yeah. Tiny country road that borders the Ribbon Ridge Vineyard. A place where five different Pinot Noir clones enjoy warm days and cool nights. I'm gonna cut that Give out. This shit, yeah. <laughs> oh, great. It happens. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. It was fine. Fine. Yeah. Um, so, where were we? Oh, we already screwed no, it up. No, we just so. did the rinse, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. The, so what, was, what was the price point on these? Which is the question I was wanting to ask the whole time we were talking earlier. So, uh, what are the price point on both? I forgot. We'll be right back. Jesus, Dan. <laughs> it's, I bought the, I've had these for a couple months now. It, it was oh, you had? A while to get, yeah, it's been taking us a while to get into a show. So. All right, we're back. So the, yeah. the, the perspective is the cheaper of the two by just a little bit. Like we, we found this to be just under 30 bucks. this to be just over $30. So, right, given your deviation from retailer to retailer, you know, they're both, you know, $30, give or take. Yeah. So. And, and in the perspective... At twenty eight dollars is totally a buy. Definitely right? great worth, stuff. Worth checking out, especially if you like a more fruit driven, easily easy drinking Pinot. It's I know some people get really excited about Ruben Ridge. Yeah, if you like that ABA, great way to worth great checking out for that. Okay, so now we're drinking the uh, the two thousand ten Lewis Rogers Pinot. A lot more earthy character on the nose here. Yeah, it's a little the, spicy notes. The fruit flavors are leaning more towards the darker side too, right? Like. There was more uh, res like brighter red fruits going on in the nose of the last one. Mm -hmm. This is this is darker. The earth here notes are definitely coming out more sort of like a mushroomy thing. Um, yeah, it smells good. Yeah, I totally I mean, agree. Delicious, right? Like, I'm, like <laughs> I'm trying to like nail the fruits down. They're a little more a little more complex. I'm like leaning towards blackberry, but it's yeah. definitely more more than that. Oh, this smells wonderful. That's drinking really nicely right now, too. And where the last one where I was like, uh, you know the earthy flavors I'm getting on the nose? They're not coming through on the palate. All of the earthy flavors I, sm I, I could smell are coming through in the mouth. Like, this tastes like dirt and mushroom. Like, you didn't wash off the mushrooms that you just harvested too much and you, you're like, or eating them or something. Like, there is tons of earthy character in this. With, uh, like, the red fruit cherry thing going on in the back, on the side. It's right? totally, it's, yeah. yeah. It was, it, Took the words right out of my mouth, like the, that bright, just a touch of sweetness on the fruit, not like RS sweetness, just like really good, juicy fruit, but it lingers to the sides while that, yeah, like that, the darker earthy elements stick in the middle. Very similar to this one, the, the structural integration is fantastic already, <laughs> like the acidity and the tannins work really well together, don't cause any trouble, just provide well, this, this is, nice this is more structure. balanced than the last one, for yeah. sure. Definitely Things more balanced, more fun. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Long finish. Killer. Wow. Getting a little bit of cranberry at the end there too, kind of coming in with the acidity. Um, kind of a nice offset to some of those like sweeter fruity notes that show up earlier. This is the dirtiest Pinot I've had out of 2010. Like I could see that. Like as far as like stank and like like good. We're talking like yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's late. I've already had a couple that's glasses of wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's it's dirty, but like in a good way. And some people like that in their Pinots, like especially, you know, DVP. I think a lot of people. I think a lot of people. They want to yeah. taste the earth. They want to taste that wow. funk. And like, this has got it in spades. 
lots of it and it's delicious at the same time. And so. it's got this feeling of richness without being too heavy. Um, that is like one of the exciting things that Pinot Noir can really do well, um, and, and something that that I you know that you like fairly frequently see in much higher priced wines. Like this, this is another one. Like elements of this definitely remind me of stuff from the, in the in the fifty dollar range, right? Totally um, complex complexity wise. And 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 again, you know, we talk about that too. Like, yeah, if, if you know, if I paid fifty dollars for wine that tasted like this, I wouldn't complain at all. I, I, totally. I still think this is a rock solid purchase. Um, so at thirty dollars or thirty two dollars. Thumbs Fantastic. Up. Thumbs up. Yeah. Great yeah. QPR, um, showing some great complexity, some interesting things about Oregon Pinot Noir. Um, yeah, lasts long in the finish. A lot of cool things going on. Uh, 91 plus for me. Um, but yeah, and and that, that's and I'm kind of wanting to push it even a little more, but that's that's where I'm going to stay. But but definitely, like definitely worth checking out that price point. Great wine. Really lovely 2010. I'm surprised. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go 91 points as well. Um, I think. I think for certain people, this will be 92 or perhaps even 93 point wine. Mm -hmm. I am more of a. You know, like I, I like the fruitier flavors with the funk. There's a lot of earth here, almost so much so that I prefer a little, a little more fruit. Okay. Personally. Sure. Nice. Um, you got the shirt on for it. Yeah, it? yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, this is. Better than perspective in the sense that the balance is is here. The, the stru structural elements of this wine are right in line with the rest of the fruit and the intensity of the other flavors. And, uh, it's a wonderful wine. Just a little more earthy than, than I was hoping, but or and, that I wanted. And I think it's kind of smaller production stuff too. So those of you like outside of Oregon, like definitely go to the winery website to try and get a hold of it. Um, and those of you in Oregon, if you see it at the shop, pick it up. Definitely worth your time to check out. I really hope I didn't come across wrong there, cause like or, or bad there, cause like nah. I do like earthy elements in my in my wine. This has just got a lot of it. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. that's 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 personal preference. So. Um, question of the day. Uh, I just went out mushroom hunting today. Had a pretty good day doing that. Chaz went mushroom hunting at New Seasons. Uh, is going to have uh, chanterelles for the first time over the next day or two here. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've had them before at restaurants. But right, oh. Okay. As far as cutting up and putting them on my own pizza. Yeah. I haven't had that happen, so. So, simple question of the day to you guys. What, what's your favorite kind of mushroom? So, thanks for watching. Shiitakes, so far. Ah. We're going to discount truffles because that's kind of cheating. That uh, really is. Had fresh porcinis recently. Uh, King Bolites. Blew my mind. Love those things. Well, it starts with a P or a B? But P. Por porcini. Porcini. The Italian okay. name of it. Okay. Germans call them Steinpils. Stone <laughs> mushrooms. Right? Okay. Some, I think the French call them seps. So, it's... it's Right. But Interesting. Okay. Cultures around the world love them. I'm in line with that. Mushrooms are rad. See you guys next time. Cheers.